Afghan interpreters and their families being denied asylum as the U.S. exits Afghanistan. Many now concerned that the Taliban will seek out these interpreters and their families for ransom or retribution. Joining me now, an intelligence analyst who worked with Afghan interpreters, Lieutenant Stephen Kettle. Lieutenant, tell us about what's going on here. These are, we have abandoned our allies, these interpreters and their families, and left them to be murdered, frankly. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and that's why I've been pushing, pushing, pushing. Uh, ever since I heard in June, early August, that uh, our government's response was to pull out of Afghanistan uh, lock, stock, and barrel, I contacted my uh, closest interpreters that I managed. I managed about 30 when I was there 13 years ago as a sergeant first class. So I finished as a lieutenant. And I asked the simple question, do you still have family in Afghanistan? Not that I'm just Joe citizen learning to be an electrician right now, but I have people that I know. And if I don't know, I'm gonna find them because I want these people here and safe. They bent over backwards to take care of me. They had commanders and they had troop leaders when they went on their furlough at the big main base. Like, I want this guy back. And those are the guys that got their visa and are here in the States. I have two that I've been working with in particular. One's gone dark. I have heard from him. I'm assuming he's back trying to get his in-laws and other people out of Afghanistan and putting himself in harm's way. The other one, I, and I can't give names, these people were right. willing to come on the air and talk about their situation, but they're afraid of having their names or face on TV and the repercussions and revenge and harm that will come to them, their families back in Afghanistan. The two key ones I've focused in on are, I'll say, man one, his wife and child are still in Afghanistan. He is pleading his pleading with the customs agency. He, it is a wall that is 30 feet high and 10 feet thick. His wife and child have been in their books for almost three years, or at least three years, since around 2018. Meanwhile, we have thousands of people pouring across our southern border that we have no idea who they are. We have complete files on, including background checks. I ran them myself in secret. I took fingerprints. I took their faces and run it through every intelligence and uh, uh, FBI type database I could to make sure they were safe to come to the US. But what about their families? Right. I'm sitting here, I have four children asleep in bed. Why can't he have his new wife and child with him back east? The, the lack of preparation. That, that's, that's where it starts. The lack of preparation, and this is on Joe Biden's shoulders and people in his administration is appalling and frightening at the lack of preparation that they made to get these translators out of the country, those who are still there and their families. There's this one organization called No One Left Behind that is run by mm -hmm. a former U.S. Army vet who served in both Afghanistan and Iraq. And he told the Wall Street Journal editorial page that he's being contacted by U.S. military units trying to get information about what's going on at the airport because they have no on-the-ground intelligence. That there are many translators and their families who have visas who are ready to leave who are stuck there. And then we have families of we have parents, we have in-laws, and more importantly, we have uh, wives and children with no visas right. that belong to someone who is here in the U.S. that already has a visa, that is already trusted, and is already pro-American. They want to come over here and enjoy the freedoms that you and I have. I don't, I'm not going to talk about the administration. That's another subject. When we first started this conversation, it was about we need to create an emergency program within Customs and Immigration now with how it has declined, and I've been trying to keep up on the headlines, how it has declined just in the last few hours. We really, what, what are we gonna do? Send patrols out to find these families? They are scared to go down to, to their own street. This man and his wife and child, I'm pleading with them. They're, I wanna be careful. They're very, very close to the airport in Kabul. Mm -hmm. They're a half an hour distance, we'll say. I'm pleading with them, get your family to the airport. We'll figure out how to get them past security. 
we have to, but they're too, they're too afraid. They're seeing patrols in the streets, black masks, and they know it's the Taliban. And they know in their minds, whether it's been confirmed or not, it is hunter seeker for people that have worked with the Afghan government, worked with the coalition and worked with our forces. Right. Uh, Lieutenant, uh, before we go, what do you want to hear from Joe Biden? What can he say or do? Um, I want what to hear leadership. Again, I want to hear some leadership, and I want to hear him listening to real military commanders, not, uh, we call them OAR chasers. That's your military report card. Mm -hmm. All they're trying to do is a chain, uh, build up a rank and get a better retirement. I don't know how many he has in his staff. We need true leaders who've been boots on the ground and give a damn. <laughs> What, what else can I say? And if that's not going to work, then we need to go back to the acquaintances that I have, not my particular acquaintances, right. but these retired leaders right. that have an opinion, that do give a damn, and know by what kind of strategy we can put together, because they've been right. there multiple times. Lieutenant Stephen Cattle, thank you so much, Lieutenant.